Okay, Psalm 22. <clears throat> my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Far from my deliverance are my words of groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I have no rest. Yet you are holy, O oh, you who are enthroned upon the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. <clears throat> they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were delivered. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, a reproach of men, and despised by the people. All who see me sneer at me, they separate with the lip. They wag the head, saying, Commit yourself to him, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, because he delights in him. Yet you are he who brought me forth from the womb. You made me trust when upon my mother's breasts. Upon you I was cast from birth. You have been my God from my mother's womb. Be not, be not far from me, for trouble is near, for it is none to help me. Many bulls have surrounded me, strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. <clears throat> they open wide their mouth at me as a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws, and you lay me in the dust of death. For dogs have surrounded me. A band of evildoers has encompassed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look, they stare at me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Go ahead and be seated. So last time we saw that Jesus was arrested. He was taken uh, before Annas, the sometime high priest, who uh, did a preliminary examination preliminary trial. He was taken then to Caiaphas, the official high priest, who accused him of blasphemy. And then he was taken to Pilate, because the Jews had no authority to condemn anyone to death, especially for blasphemy, which the Romans did not recognize as, as a crime. Pilate talked to Jesus. He was expecting an accusation from someone, an actual crime that Jesus had committed. They were expecting Judas to show up and make the actual accusation, but apparently Judas didn't show up. So Pilate asks him some questions and then says, I find no fault. There's, there's no problem here. But they kept saying, crucify him, crucify him. And it says in chapter 19 that Pilate then took Jesus and scourged him. Even though he found no fault in him, he figured, if I bloody him up a bit, maybe these people will be satisfied. There was no guilt in him by official proclamation of the official government. But Jesus, Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. Now we like to think that uh, he got 39 lashes, but the Romans had no uh, compunction against going way beyond that. And the Roman scourging often led to death. And during the scourging, he was simply handed over to the soldiers to uh, 
utilize whatever cruelty they could muster. And it says that they twisted together a crown of thorns. And I'm told that these thorns sometimes were, they're not like rose thorns, they were like two inches long. And one of the other gospels says that they put the crown on and then pounded it on with, with, uh, with a rod. And they put it on his head and put a purple robe on him to mock him him because purple was the color of royalty. And they began to come up to him and say, Hail, King of the Jews, and to give him slaps in his face, just exhibiting their cruelty. In Luke, it tells us that Pilate summoned the chief priests and the rulers and the people and said to them, You brought this man to me as one who incites the people to rebellion. And behold, having examined him, examined him before you, I find no guilt in this man regarding the charges which you make against him. No, nor has Herod. They sent him to Herod, hoping that Herod could find something to condemn him by. Nor has Herod, for he sent him back to us, and behold, nothing deserving death has been done by him. Therefore, I will punish him and release him. Pilate really wanted to release Jesus. Some people have called that into question. Why would Pilate do that? Because some of the things we know about Pilate previously and historically was that he was a rather cruel man. <clears throat> but we see Pilate trying to do two things. We should, we should have a bit of sympathy, I think, for Pilate because he was in a hard place, between a rock and a hard place. The uh, rock probably was his boss, Tiberius. Now, the, just a little background on the politics of the day. There's always politics going on. Uh, Tiberius was the emperor, but he was on perpetual vacation. And a guy uh, by the name of Sejanus was acting as regent and doing everything that the emperor should have done. And Pilate was kind of one of Sejanus's favorites. In fact, he got all of his appointments by uh, being buddies with this guy. Well, as so often happens in politics, one day you're in favor and the next day you're not. And <clears throat> Sejanus was, had been accused of treason and executed, just, you know, like within the previous year before this happened. And all of his buddies were also being investigated by the emperor's men. So Pilate was being looked at pretty closely. He sees the, uh, the Jewish leaders bringing this man, Jesus, and making accusations that don't hold up. And he's trying, I think, maybe for the first time in his life, to do the right thing. But he's a middle manager. He's got to please the guy above him, and he's got to please the folks below him. And he's having a hard time. John, it says that Pilate came out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know I find no guilt in him. And Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to them, Behold the man. Like, look at him. Haven't, hasn't he suffered enough? Could this pathetic character be a danger to anybody? Behold. Look closely. 
says that when the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify, crucify. And Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. And the Jews answered, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he made himself out to be the Son of God. Well, that could be problematic if he was, in fact, not the Son of God. You know, back in chapter 8 of John, Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. And therefore they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. <coughs> now, that's kind of interesting says that Jesus hid himself. Now, he was not in the temple building. He was outside in the courts. And he's having a dialogue with these Jewish leaders. And after they pick up stones to stone him, he hides himself. Now, if you've ever been on the Temple Mount, there's not much of a place for a mouse to hide. He just kind of vanished. He hid himself and went out of the temple. When Jesus referred to himself as I am, they understood exactly what he was saying. And the truth is, if it wasn't true, then he was guilty of blasphemy. But they're speaking to Pilate. Pilate has a different perspective, <coughs> different background. He made himself out to be the Son of God. Now, this was not a uh, really an unusual thing for uh, for a, a, a pagan to encounter. They had <coughs> tales uh, of all sorts of demigods and gods in human form. So it says that therefore Pilate, when Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He was afraid to condemn Jesus because he was thinking this, this might be true. This might be a, uh, a demigod that I'm dealing with. So he entered into the praetorium again and said to Jesus, where are you from? You know, like, are, are, are you from one of the gods but Jesus gave him no answer he didn't even answer that question so Pilate said to him do you not speak to me do you not know that I have authority to release you and I have authority to crucify you and Jesus answered you would have no authority over me unless it had been given you from above Pilate's playing the political game. That's how he received his authority, was by hooking up, as, as we say, hooking our wagon to someone else. And Jesus says, for this reason, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Jesus saying essentially to Pilate that you are functioning you're acting uh, within the uh, authority as governor that was handed to you. And I think Jesus is recognize, recognizing he's between a rock and a hard place. And for this reason, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. The one who did this out of his own volition. So who are we talking about? Are we talking about Judas? Or the the, uh, the uh, members of the Sanhedrin that were complicit in this, the high priest, probably all of the above. The one who did this of their own volition, who brought these charges, have the greater sin. Pilate seems to be recognizing 
a super, supernatural origin of Jesus. And it says, as a result of this, Pilate made efforts to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself out to be a king opposes Caesar. Now, this term, friend of Caesar, is not just a happenstance phrase. Um, friends of Caesar were the power elite in the Roman Empire. And Pilate had done everything he could to get himself where he was by whining and dining or uh, befriending the right people. And he considered himself a friend of Caesar. Maybe he was even considered that by others. Matthew tells us that while he, he Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat. His wife sent him a message saying, Have nothing to do with that righteous man. For last night I suffered greatly in a dream because of him. So Pilate's wife was somehow in the know. Most wives are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, apparently he paid attention to her. He was doing, trying to do, what she asked. He's trying, in this particular instance, to do the right thing. There, we have traditions, legendary traditions, that Pilate became a believer later on. Possibly that's uh, why the gospel writers paint him uh, in rather a good light. He was not uh, the despot that many Roman leaders were, or at least the way he's portrayed. Possibly. The, the stronger tradition is that Pilate's wife became a believer later. But shortly after this incident, Pilate is recalled by the emperor, mainly because he was a friend of Sejanus uh, for investigation. But by the time Pilate <coughs> got to Rome, Tiberius was dead. And Caligula was now emperor. Uh, not a good situation, but we don't know what the outcome was. Some people, some historians say that Pilate got that infamous letter that some Roman officials quite often got that said, your emperor has no longer any need of your services, which meant you were expected to commit suicide, Monica. I thought he ended up in Gaul. That's one of the other uh, possibilities. Uh, one I read said that he, uh, possibly even ended up in England. Of course, there are some people who say everybody ended up in England. <laughs> Joseph of Arimathea, uh, uh, Nicodemus. Uh, maybe. Therefore, when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat of a at a place called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha, uh, which we just saw a possible picture of. It may have been there. It may be at the Antonian <coughs> Fortress, but which was only uh, looking at that picture and thinking it's about maybe 50 yards around the corner. Not far. Now, it was the day of preparation for the Passover. And we need to uh, dwell on this for just a second because I thought the Passover was the evening before. Jesus and his uh, disciples celebrated the Passover in the upper room. Uh, and it's telling us here that this is the day of preparation for the Passover. But there were two Passovers. One was the Passover that every family 
celebrated in their homes, but the following day there was a Passover uh, carried out by the priests. This was the lamb slayed, slain for the nation, and only the priests partook of that. And it uh, has a name like Hagiga, I think. Hagiga. Hagiga, yeah, got it right. Uh, it says it was the sixth hour, and he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. Now, saying it's the sixth hour is has something to do with the, uh, the procedures in the temple. It's beeping, whatever it is. Okay. And we really don't know what uh, John is trying to tie it to as far as the preparation of the Passover. It's the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. There's a mystery here. We should try to track it down. I'm not sure what it is. So they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. The final rejection. Yeah, but they had Herod. But it was a final rejection of the Messianic kingdom. So he, it says that he handed him over to be crucified. Now, there might be a little bit of confusion because it sounds like Pilate is saying, I'm not going to order the crucifixion. You guys, you, you take care of it yourself, but they really couldn't. Pilate handed him over to be crucified. Pilate re reluctantly ordered his, uh, his uh, soldiers to carry it out. And it says they took Jesus, therefore, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, or the place of the skull which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. And we're pretty sure we know where the place is, but the stone that supposedly looks like a skull is all covered over. It's got a little window about this big so that you can look through the glass and see the, see the stone in there, which if you could take all the covering off of it and you could see that it looked like a skull, but you can't see that today. And all these images where we have the three crosses on the hill, nowhere does it say it was on a hill. It's definitely uphill. We, uh, when we were with Arnold, we walked the Via Dolorosa from the Antonia Fortress to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and it's definitely uphill. It's a good hike. But the crucifixion scene was not on a hilltop. It says there they crucified him. With him, with him two other men, one on either side, and Jesus in between. John doesn't say anything about anything more about the other two. I believe it's in Luke where where one of them says to the other, don't uh, don't mock this man. We're getting what we deserve, that he's innocent. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. John doesn't mention that. But it says that Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It was written, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Therefore, many of the Jews read this inscription for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. And some people have speculated that the uh, reason that the uh, Jewish leaders were upset with this, it says that they went to Pilate and said, do not write king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. If, 
written in Hebrew, if you write it in a certain way, uh, the first letter of each of the words, uh, Jesus, the Nazarene, the King of the Jews, reads the name of God. Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. And that that's what they were upset about. It's a possibility we don't know. It might be one of those, what I call, Johnisms. John quite often puts things in there, kind of like you know Jesus writing on the ground. What did he write on the ground? Well, that's not the point. Who wrote on the ground with his finger on the earth? God did. But Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. It sounds like he's saying, this is my final judgment. This is what you accused him of. Don't come back to me and complain because I gave you what you wanted. Back in chapter 18, Pilate says to Jesus, so you are a king. And Jesus answered, You say correctly that I am a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And Pilate said to him, What is truth? And sometimes we imagine Pilate saying this rather sneeringly, you know, What is truth? like he had been burned by the concept of truth somehow. Things he thought were true maybe were not. But maybe Pilate was a real, uh, a serious and sincere inquirer. Maybe he wanted, he really did want to know what the truth is, because right after, uh, right after that, is when uh, Pilate says, "I find no guilt in him." Here's a man coming and says, "I testify to the truth." Well, that's a, a good thing to do. Paul in Romans says, "The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness." and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. Perhaps Pilate, perhaps God was revealing something to Pilate here. I like to think that that's the case. That Pilate was an astute man who was looking for something, uh, possibly he was looking for a way out of his political predicament. Pilate was maybe someone who was looking for the truth. But we live in a time when the prevalent philosophy, uh, which is known as postmodernism, and if you ask a true postmodernist what is truth, ah, whatever. That's, that's, the, that's the correct answer, whatever. But we have an awful lot of deception, deliberate deception. We just had a, an attack upon uh, Israel, and we've seen the brutality of the attackers, and we're already starting to see uh, the uh, what we call the chattering class, saying, "Well, it was really Israel's fault. Any, any anything uh, that happens to them, they deserve because of whatever. I mean, you can you can name whatever. I, I've actually heard one say that the Israelis are Nazis. Now, talk about a complete contradiction." 
but that's what we hear. And really, the only, the only thing, the only rock we have to stand on is God and His Word. Stand, stand on the Word of God. God says you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Let's pray. Lord, we're truly thankful for the truth that sets us free. Help us, Lord, in the coming days to uh, understand that uh, you did not establish Israel because in their in their land because they were the most righteous people around, but they are your people, Lord. And we know that there, throughout all time, there have been the, the seed of the woman and the seed of Satan. Lord, the seed of Satan will always try to destroy. And Lord, we just lift up uh, Israel, the nation, the people, and also those suffering um, in, uh, in Gaza because they have bad leaders. Pray, Lord, uh, for your help, your reconciliation. We ask in Jesus' name. Yeah.